And what can't this young man do? That is a statement. For win, I'm I'm happy, of course, I'm good. Omar Nurmagomedov! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! <laughs> Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, it's Wednesday, so I have a red background. If you're ever curious as to what day it is, that's how you know. And uh, Umar Nurmagomedov makes it a long, it's been a long time since he's been on the show. And Ginger Billy, uh, comedian Ginger Billy, who I've never met, um, but I am aware of who he is and what he does, will also be joining us. I heard he likes to go shirtless. Well, you may have to do the same. If he doesn't have a shirt on, you can bet your bottom dollar. Ooh. You like that, Jimmy? I do. I never said that before in my life. Well, I hope you say it frequently and from now on. Wow. I like it. I will be shirtless. Uh, Jimmy, What's this up, weekend, I'm going to Atlantic City for the Ring of Combat. Mm-hmm. You know, with the family. Yep. I got young Marcus fighting. That's right. You know? And I'm going to try when I'm out there to see a matinee of Doom Part 2. It is getting glowing reviews, Jimmy. Oh. And I am so excited to see it. Um, it's my most anticipated movie. Now, when Matt goes to a movie, yes. what, do you, what do you get? What little treats do you get? Uh, Matt, very good question. Thank you. I this is what I like. I like a big tub of popcorn, no butter, no butter, uh, salt, put some salt on there. Uh, I like that. And I also, if they have the pretzels, a lot of times I'll grab pretzels because I don't normally get them because they bloat me, but I do have them on a, a nice sure theater. Because what do you get to drink? Ah, uh, I get a big sometimes I'll get a a Sprite, but it's a diet Sprite. It's it's flavored weird, like orange. Or other times, I'll get a Dr. Pepper diet with vanilla stuff in it. Now, you I, and Edwin I, might go? You and Edwin may go? Edwin, well, yeah, Edwin's going to be there for sure. Are you worried that, the, that if, if you guys go, that people are going to give you a hard time in the movie theater? No. I want to make sure Edwin doesn't go on his phone. Oh, yeah, you got to. I have to tell him. Are we ready to start? Umar Nurmagomedov yes. is in the waiting room. Let's bring him in. He is fighting. Is that this Saturday? Um, I should probably know that, but being an unprepared ass. So I'm going to the Ring of Combat on Friday, and I'll be watching this on Saturday. And then my Maria's got a little dance solo. She yeah. So, yeah, I got my weekend planned out. Jimmy, I taught this morning. I had 35 people on the mat. Oh, wow. Nice. At 7 a.m. Hang out with me, you yeah. know? Yeah, we have a good time, you know? Uh, yeah, so whenever you want to bring in Umar, you can. They are the third fight. Oh, no, second fight up. Uh, Raul Rosas Jr.'s fight uh, was canceled. Um, this looks like a really good card, though. Ah, oh, there he is. He is. What's up? How you doing? Good. All right, Umar. It's fight time, man. It's fight time. Yes. We, you know, finally, finally, fight time. Finally, yeah. I know, man. I mean, how frustrating has it been to be to be sidelined, to not be able to fight? How how frustrating has it been? I'm excited. Like, feels good. Like, I did great job, great training camp, and everything is nice. Just have to go inside and try. How long were you out? The last fight I did 20 January. One year and a couple months. Wow, okay. Uh, and it was your shoulder. And how is your shoulder? Everything is good? Yes, yes, nice. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for UFC. They take care about me like, like his son, you know, like, like parents take care about kids. Like wow. I did very good surgery. I did very nice recovery and... I'm ready. I'm ready for everything. 
Now, you, you went from fighting. You were going to have this high-profile fight versus uh, the very dangerous San, Sandy, um, uh, Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen, yeah. Uh, and now you're fighting a very tough uh, Be uh, Begzat, who's only got one loss out of 18 fights. He's debuting. So it's a very different situation with a very dangerous opponent. Does it really matter to you uh, who you're fighting right now? No. No, because do you remember what say Islam? What means be, be champion? Like I think same same means when you fight. Doesn't matter who. If somebody wanna challenge you, somebody wanna test you, somebody want to go inside cage with you and uh, check who gonna win, who cares? You don't yeah, care who Jimmy. it is. That's the right Jimmy. attitude, Jimmy. Yep. My 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 in my mind, like for my mentally, like doesn't matter. Even Brock Lesnar, if he will do fight my weight, bantam weight, show on the check weights, and we can do. I like that attitude. Now this that guy, do you let me ask you, Mar, because this is uh Backside's first fight in the UFC. Now, he's a very experienced fighter, though. And you know when someone has their first fight in the UFC, it's a very big event for them. Do you expect him to come out, you know, maybe much more aggressive with the adrenaline of the first fight? Um, maybe more than he would have normally been. What do you, uh, how do you think people handle that? Uh, and I know it's different for different fighters. Uh, of course, for him, it's... Uh... He gonna he will not lose nothing. He will not lose nothing. I will lose everything. It's uh, two difference for him and for me. And uh, I think he will be very excited and he will try to finish me. I think like we'll see. I don't I don't know how this guy gonna like fight with me like inside cage. But I'm going to inside cage like fighting like same for the title. I'm not, I will not think, I will not lose my uh, focus, lose my, like, uh, you know, I would say. I will, I will, I, I mean, I will be ready, like, for everything. I'm, I'm not gonna think I'm going to with some debut guy and it's gonna be easy, easy job. No, I will fight same, like, even if I will fight with Merab, with Begzat, with uh, Corey, with everybody. I will go to inside cage and I'm going to show best performance. Let me ask you, what did you think of Marab's fight versus uh, Henry Shahuto? Oh, he did very good job. He, nice. he, he, he's very good. I don't want to tell, so I, I, I think, I, 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 I hope uh, he will fight for the title. He deserves, he have 10 wins win streak like nobody did this in bantamweight before him and yeah. he's a great fighter and uh, he's a good guy all the time i saw him in pi we talking about i asked him i i always joking with him like it's not about when you go to inside cage it's different outside is different outside we nice but yeah. i hope he not upset and his fans not upset i won't fight with him but what we got, what we can do, because we we here, he we one of the best, and I want to check myself. I want to test myself. hundred percent. And yeah, and also, what do you think, too, about uh, Cheeto Vera and O'Malley? That's a very interesting matchup, because their first fight ended uh, faster than anybody hoped it would because of that... Uh, that injury. What do you think of this fight? And you know, and she and, and has such good dynamic striking. O'Malley I and think, Cheeto I starts think, a little slow. Sorry, I think uh, Cheeto is a very, very boring fighter, and if he, he don't have wrestling for Sean O'Malley, he have not bad grappling, a little bit he can control, but he don't have wrestling. In the first round, uh, he's in first fight. Uh, fight uh, uh, when they fight, O'Malley was beat him until he injured. I think this guy, this guy like Chito, 
not will do nothing for Omele and Omele maybe Omele will finish him but maybe like if it's gonna be five round I think Omele gonna beat him it's easy fight for Omele really now, oh that's wild interesting All yeah right. now you became a world sambo champion at 19 yes right that's wild let me ask you there's a shirt out there that says if jujitsu was if sambo was easy it'd be called jujitsu or something like that yeah Habib why did why did the say is now why did the sambo guys always try to bully the jujitsu guys i i think they're not really it was like some doing for some attention like it, it was like kidding we're doing jujitsu too it's a great sport and we not hate like but it's it's about challenge i think because who who doing better jujitsu guys or sambo guys yeah that's nice because jimmy does jujitsu now so he goes i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna confront him i go jimmy calm down that's um, well I, I I don't want to have to rip off my white belt. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure everybody's okay. No, that's yeah. all right. I'm just joking around. That's wild though. But I'll tell you, I think part of it's due that jujitsu guys are they consider a little bit of pretty boys because Sambo does have the striking element into it. You know, mm -hmm. maybe might be. And uh, I was reading about you. Uh, do you you do you have a drone? Yes, I have. Well, I, you know, it's funny because I, I don't trust myself with a drone. Like I know I'd probably do things I shouldn't do. I'd start looking in people's windows. Um, what, what do you like to film with a uh, drone? What do you do with it? Natural. I like filming natural and uh, beautiful place, beautiful views. You know, it's like God, God create very beautiful urge for us. And I just want to show. So do you, do, is there a camera on the drone or do you have to put your phone on it or is there a camera on it? Drone, it's like the, on the, on the drone have to camera and they have pulled controller and it's easy. Everybody, th I think everyone who can buy this will understand this for like for five minutes. Oh, I don't, well, I don't know if you, I know some, I know some have guys who filming like with professional drones they own like glasses and they fly like very fast it's different they doing this professional for me it's like hobby you just enjoy doing it yes 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 how high does it go hmm? how, how high how high does it go uh it's going high like uh two like one miles Wow. Yeah. Don't you worry about planes? Like that would scare me that I would hit a plane or a helicopter by accident. I, 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 uh, I add one program like, uh, it, it, like add in map and they have map where you can fly and where you can't. If you will fly, for example, here close to airport, they're going to put you in jail. Oh, okay. It's a problem. They have, yes. Yes. And they, this program show, like, for example, if you go to some uh, beach, like uh, where I have like a uh, sea, they, have, they show you, you can fly there. But in the city under like where I have roads, cars, people, you, okay, you're, you're some, something happening and your drop go down like for cars. It's going to be some accident. You have to be, be careful. Our, our producer is sending us a note saying that some drones won't even fly in airspace if you try. Like, I guess they're programmed to not go into certain airspace. Uh, that's a nice hobby to have. How big is it? Small, like this. Not big. Small. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like a nice thing to do. You, and you like to go camping and you like to just be outdoors. Hmm? Do you, you just like being outdoors? Yes. I just yeah. do, like, for, you know... Sometimes I like I like uh, I like uh, natural. I like walk. I like thinking, like walking. You know, when I, for example, even when I'm in camp, Sunday I'm going to some place where natural is walking, and then I take if I saw some beautiful place, I filming and show. That's a healthy yeah. hobby, Jimmy. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's that's what you want to do. 
you don't want to be sitting there with a VR headset on and you're not getting no no exercise, Jimmy. Yeah, this is outdoors. Nature. Yeah. I like that, Umar. I like that a lot. Thank you. I yeah, edit. edit your videos. It's it, it's a healthy hobby. It's it's a there are some things that are nice to be preoccupied by. That's like a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not going to get you all crazy and and angry. Um, now, if you win this fight, I, I know you were supposed to fight Sanhagen. Um, obviously, that got sidelined. But I I understand everyone. I understand everyone in my division. I don't want to talk too much, and look at uh, behind this opponent. He's a tough yeah. guy. Smart but uh, I understand they don't want to fight with me. They don't want to lose. They want to be like run away. But it's okay. Everybody, uh, everybody understand this, and uh, we'll see. I like that after your last fight. You know they were worried about your grappling, your grappling, your submission game. What if they get me down? And then after your last fight with that brutal knockout. Now, now, if you had them worried, now they don't know where to go with you. You know what I mean? So now they're really worried, <laughs> which is a good thing. You got people talking, you know? Mm-hmm. You're doing something right, buddy. I'll tell you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, right. did you hit him with the knee, by the way, in that knockout? I've watched it a few times from the angle. Did you hit him with the knee and the right, or was it just the right? Uh, you talk about last fight, right? Yeah, yep. myself. I even didn't understand how it's happening. For after <laughs> yes. Not so I, tried, I tried, I saw he coming, you know, he coming to, he come to too close for punch me. And I I think I will meet him with knee. I, I, I kick my knee. Like I try to knee him like, and then I didn't punch him. I need to become balance. You know, when I come in balance, I punch him. Okay, so it was probably more the punch than the knee. Because I was I couldn't tell if the knee landed like in his chest or in, I, I, I yeah, couldn't I, really see. First of all, I, 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 I remember I tried to meet him with knee. He came to too close and he go a little down. I tried to give him knee. And when I put my knee back, I tried to become, you know, balanced. And then I punch him. He didn't see, but even me didn't understand how happening. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't feel so bad. If you if you were right there and you didn't know, all right, I feel better. Uh, well, look, man, have a great fight. I'm happy that you're healthy and you're fighting again. We're very psyched that you're back. Uh, I believe you're 17 and 0. I mean, you're a tremendous uh, record, and uh, I, I just I, he also a very very a very good fighter. So this is a great great first fight back for you. Uh, not an easy fight, and you have a guy coming into the UFC who has a he has everything to gain uh, by winning. Thanks. So have a great fight. It's uh, it's this uh, four o'clock main card, one thirty prelims, and uh, it is this Saturday in Vegas and uh, uh, Gazeev against uh, Rosenstrike. Good talking to you again, Omar. Right, Thank Omar. you so much, guys. Have Good a great fight. See you. All right, take, take care. Care. That's exciting, man. I yeah. like that. Hey, yeah. man. And that drone is very interesting. I'm, 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 my friend had one. I'm always interested in guys that just enjoy doing healthy things with those. I like when he was saying about he's fighting this, this, this new kid that's got a really good record with a lot of experience. Basically, what he was saying, I was going to say a wise man once said, Umar, and I think this is pretty much summing up what he was saying, that anyone can get it. That's it. Anyone can get anyone, 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 anyone can get it. Bang, bang. All right. You got me? Don't leave, you fuck. (laughs) Jimmy, anybody could get. That's what he's basically telling you. You understand? Yeah. Now, listen, Ginger Billy, Ginger. I guess it's not a, you know, an insult when you call somebody with red hair ginger. No, I mean, it's just a, it can be if you say it uh, derogatory, but if you say anything, you say nice. He's very popular. Uh, he makes funny videos. He's got almost over 6 million people on Facebook and uh, 2 what? million people on uh, um, YouTube. He's, he's very, very well known. Well, 
What did he do to the boss? Why did Dana White leave that that podcast with Ginger Billy sitting right next to him? Well, he may have been just as confused as everybody else was watching that. Maybe he's afraid of gingers. <laughs> That's not right. No, probably not. No, I don't think so. I mean, come on now. I'm a little tuckered out today. I apologize. I'm doing a set that. tonight. So uh, 7 p.m. Yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. Oh, maybe um, why? Why not with you? And I'll tell you me after. I'm just not a good sleeper, and I was doing all this stuff before bed on the computer, just editing and and like organizing files. And when you get your brain going, it's hard to shut it off. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jimmy, my stomach is so bad, and I just I am so uncomfortable in bed until I have to finally get up and just go sit on my throne. Yeah. It doesn't. It just. I then I have to wait, Jimmy. I'll go in there at three thirty or three ish, and I'm coming out an hour later. Yeah, it's not good. Things got to take its course, you know. Of course. And then you know, everything will take its course, you know. Anyway, Jimmy, yeah. um, you know, I told you about my road trip. I'm hoping to see Dune. And uh, besides that, I'm almost done with this Jack uh, Jack Reacher. It's called Reacher. Oh. Uh, Alan Richardson. It's good, that show, Reacher. Jimmy, can we hear about yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know if I love the name Reacher. Yeah, you like a Reacher Rounder. Of course I do. It's, it's only courtesy. Who doesn't? I don't like that. <laughs> Jimmy. Yes, sir. Uh, do you, did you ever do any comedy with? Did yes. You? Oh, um, um no, we've never met physically. All right. Well, I heard he trains. He looks like he trains. He's fucking big. Should I do push-ups? Is he going to do it? Is he going to take his shirt off? <sighs> if he takes his shirt off, I'm taking mine off. I don't know. But he's got a bunch of gigs coming up. If you know who he is. Gingerbillycomedy.com uh, before he comes on. He's got casinos, a lot of the funny bones, which are good clubs, the comedy zones. I've done that one in Jacksonville. He's in Spokane. He had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, clubs. And he could probably be doing theaters if he wanted to, but he, I bet you he likes getting the reps in clubs. He probably likes getting up and doing four sets. Maybe he's uh, gearing up to shoot something. Yeah, dude. I hope you're doing that too. Well, yeah, eventually, Matt. I'm just, I'm still doing my podcast with my wife. That's what I'm kind of concentrating on now, just doing that and getting those episodes up. And, um, you know. Dude, I, hey, this is crazy. What? Uh, just now I checked my Instagram and comedian, com, comedian Ginger Billy is following me now. I'm following him back right now. Oh, Look at, didn't that work out nicely? Uh, He's probably looking and saying, who is this little ball guy I'm going to talk to? I'm sure he's aware of you. I love big. Oh, he on his Instagram, it says, I love big booty meats. Me and him are going to get along really well. Well, I'll be honest, a big fat hiney. I think most people can agree uh, on. I don't know if everybody likes it. Yeah. Uh, I am an ass man. I'll don't say. Say it. Don't you say it. I'm no. not an ass man. I'm an ass man. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Dude, you got to have fun. <clears throat> I guess so. And hopefully I will. <laughs> <laughs> did you trade today, Jimmy? I did. Yeah. We've been. Uh, at know? the end, we've been taking the ghee off for like the last X amount to do some things. And so today we took off the ghee for a lot of it. And it was, uh, I, I like it with the ghee, but I like it better without because A, you don't get as hot, like it's less clothing and you feel everything a little bit better, even though you don't have the things to grab. But like the head and arm choke, I can feel a little bit better. I, I just get a better idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, I, If you look at my Instagram on my story, you'll see me do a head and arm choke. Right now, I'm sure yours is better than with, mine. With the gear on. Let me see. Look yeah, at it. watch it. Watch my story. I, I, I bet you have a better head and arm than I do. I suspect. 
I used to do that with the 16 ounce boxing gloves because I just the way I distribute my weight. It's the same shit, palm to palm, and just I don't have really? that. Yeah, man, shit. The same way I do it right over there. I have a heart. I mean, uh, hopefully I'll get better at it, but uh, all right, hold on. Let me see your head and arm. Yeah, you look at that. Well, talk. I'm going back tonight to teach the, I teach the master's class tonight. That's 40 and over, you know? See that little takedown right into it? Oh, right into it. Yeah. Oh, and then his the arm way, is up. I love the, um, you know, they showed backstage uh, with Brian Ortega and Henry Gracie and they show. You see that, Jimmy? See the way the Yeah, I'm looking at you right now. Oh, you put your legs out w w completely different. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you push in when you do it? Do oh, you yes, I do. You push the into the person. Yes. So all the weight's going on there, the arm that's across, all the weight's going on that shoulder tricep. So it closes that. All my weight closes that, you know, not my arm strength. Jimmy. Oh, backstage. that's maybe what I'm doing wrong. You know what? I'm going to try that. Yeah, hey, dude. Yeah, I'm not trying to ruffle your feathers. You know? No, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to ask anyway. Uh, you know, where was I with that? I'm not head sure. And, you... Head and arm choke. Oh, so yeah, so Henner, I loved it, man, because they showed, you know, they showed them practicing something backstage and then them using it in a fight. Yeah. So if you watch, Henner Gracie shows, like, the last final, um, you know, a minute of preparation before we walk out, and he shows him doing exactly the setup where he finishes Yair Rodriguez. This is where they lose me, though. <laughs> that was great. And Henry should stop right there because then after he goes, and then right after that, because then they do the circle up, right? And there's a, they're filming up from the circle, the huddle up. <laughs> this is fucking, he goes, the only thing left was to remind him of the, the lion and the gazelle. Uh, Henry, ch check. Check, please. Was this before or after the fight? The line, line, line. Oh, of before. Oh, Henner, go listen, man. I like it. He's got the gift of gab, but yo, stick to the head, norm chokes, fucking gazelle. What listen. happened with the gazelle? I don't know oh, what I happened. Don't, I, don't, I didn't like it. The tiger and the I, lion and the gazelle. Did they become friendly? No, the exact up. They're in the thing, and he goes, "Okay, um, now let's remember the lion and the gazelle." Oh, uh, you, know, you know, what's the difference? The lion wants to be there. Yep, the lion wants to be there. All right, well, well, you know what? Hold on a second. If you're telling me that you're marching in this octagon thinking that you're going versus a gazelle, I don't agree with you. You might have the right attitude. Maybe it's about getting the right attitude. You want to be more like, of course, I want to. The lion and the gazelle. Oh, I'm. Thank God he didn't say he's the gazelle. Yeah. That would ruin all the fucking Sure. Because I'm going to be fast like a gazelle. I'm, I'm going to drink a water. Gazelle. And I'm going to. That, Adam. I don't know what that does. But, you know, I'm, I'm picturing myself as a big bird. But listen, my, my point is this. I wish they would have just showed the clip of him doing it in the locker room when you go, oh, wow. Kind of like Connor with that punch when he backed up, you know. Uh, or Ho Ho Mazavada with the flying knee he did in the locker room with Mike Brown. But no, he had to go into the gazelle talk. Anyway, listen, we got Ginger Billy coming. Yeah. He, yes, you know, uh, I'm calling you Dean Tom. Jim, uh, Jimmy. Yes. You know, I love seeing him practice it backstage because it shows that that, you know, he had that shit in the arsenal. He yes, did he did. Differently that head and arm. He did it when. Uh, because he has the longer arms. He brought his arm in like this. It was interesting the way he did that show. <laughs> oh, shit. We got Bill, Ginger Billy in the waiting Looks room. like he's in the waiting We'll get him situated and bring him in. Let's see if he's wearing a shirt. I suspect he will be. If he's not, I'm taking my shirt off. I would like that. I think it'd be very funny. Ask him if he likes to take his shirt off. Anyone in shape likes to take their shirt off. Yeah. Although Burke Kreischer was doing it when he was a big fatty, too, so I respect that. Oh, there he is. As predicted, up, shirt on. Hey, Ginger yeah. Billy, I thought you liked to be shirtless. 
I do, man, but I, I figured I'd get dressed up for y'all and I'd wear a wear a shirt for you. Appreciate um, it. Where's that? I was gonna take accent? his shirt off. Where where are you from? Long Island with that accent? Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah, it's far up north as you can think, man. I'm from South Carolina. Oh man, hey, Ginger Billy, let me ask you. By the way, I'm following you on Instagram right now. Oh, I follow you too. I just seen that and now I'm following you. And Jimmy's doesn't follow probably either one of us. But let me ask you <laughs> now, Ginger Billy, I want to talk about the, the elephant in the room. And I'm not talking about my little chubby buddy, Bill, uh, Jimmy. No, not yes, that. Sir. I'm talking about you, Jimmy. You're not a fatty, Jimmy. I, I want to talk about you on the Howie Mandel podcast. How awkward did my buddy make it for you? I feel no. awful for you, Ginger Billy. What did you say to that man to make him leave? You know, the whole world thinks I said something to that man. I, if you look on YouTube, they say, I, I don't know who this dude is with the red beard, but obviously he pissed Dana off. Everybody's saying that. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you can tell, I was there just for the Howie Mandel podcast. So I had no clue of anything that was going on uh, or anything like that. So, so what happened? I, 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 was, I just came in and sat down in the podcast. And, and the next thing I know, this is this is what's happening. This is what's going on. And I'm just, uh, uh, you know, I guess you could say I was in the right place at the right time because there's a lot of people looking at me that never would now because of this. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you know, it was, it was scary. That's a, that's a scary man when he gets mad. What you happened know? when he left? So he left. And once yeah. he left, what happened immediately after? Are you guys, does the show go on? What yeah, I, I had to, I had to save today. You know, I was like, you know, now everybody's concentrating on who I am, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change direction, and I just went on about my day and just went on about the show. Like I didn't know what to say. I wasn't about to bring that up because I was scared he's gonna come back in and you know uh, go on a rampage. So I had just, the podcast uh, started yet, or was that like the beginning and you were both booked, or like were you in the middle of doing the podcast and he was just stopping in? What was happening? No, this was this was just at the very the very beginning of everything, you know. I I, I thought I was going to be the only one there. I thought it was just yeah. going to be me. Um, so I was as much surprised I think as anybody else about the whole everything, about the whole situation. Well, okay, that is what they call cray cray. Hey, so when did you realize? Because you blew up with the social media. When? How long have you been in the in the game, the stand up comedy game? And when did you realize that you were made out for this? When did you realize you were actually funny? Six years I've been doing this. Six years I've been doing social media. Four years I've been doing stand up. Oh, that's yes, right. that's yep. not that long, I'd say, right, Jim? No, I'm, I'm fairly new in the game. I am, but um, I, I did not want to be known as a social media influencer because that's just a very douchey term to me. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. So. I felt like stand up was a uh, as a challenge to get on a stage and be able to make people laugh. Uh, so started practicing at it, and uh, I guess you could say I'm, you know, I'll never say I'm good um, because you can always get better. But uh, I mean, my my shows are selling out, everything's going well, and I, I guess I'm talented enough to hold people's attention for an hour to an hour and ten minutes. So it's it's working out for me. It's almost harder work like because you started with. Uh, YouTube and things like that. People kind of knew who you were when they're coming to see you, which I think is a little harder in the beginning because there's a pressure that most new guys don't have to deal with, which is the pressure of expectations from the audience. They're showing up to see you and here you are working material for a year. So how did you handle that? Did you go in and do spots other places or did you just go right into it? When I started out, I was hosting for five minutes. I never got to do open mics. I didn't, I didn't know what an open mic was. My first show was in front of, I think, 3,000 people at a gold nugget casino. Uh, yeah. So you're talking about sink or swim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I started hosting and then I just started working uh, up from five to 10, 10 to 15. And then I co headlined at 30. Then I went on my own and built me an hour to, you know, hour, hour and 20 minute set. And I've just worked at it and worked at it and wrote and wrote and, you know, continuously crafted uh, my set. Uh, but I, like I said, I've done maybe two open mics in my life. So everything I'm trying, I'm trying on stage uh, at my shows. So it's a, it's a little, you know, it's different. 
Now that first spot where you said there was like 3,000 people, was that your show or were you working with somebody else on the, who was the closer on that show? I was, I was hosting uh, for a guy who was, he was big at the time. Uh, his name was Darren Knight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hosted for him and then you know how things go. Y'all, y'all are in the entertainment industry and, and uh, you deal with management and stuff and you realize some people are bad people and you get away from them. And so I went out on my own, which was the best thing I could do. So it's wild, man, because you're blowing up now. And did you ever get worried? Because now you're 36 and things are going, looks like they're going phenomenal for you. Uh, but at one point you were 30 and you yeah. weren't nearly as successful or successful at all. Because they tell me that you were just starting back then. So, I mean, was there some worry about your future, about, yo, is this shit going to work out? Not really. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a medical professional. I'm a respiratory therapist by trade. Oh, there Which, you go. Yeah, I know. It's, it's scary to think that I'll be, <laughs> you know, I, I run uh, the life support machines and all that stuff. So I had a career oh. and my wife is a nurse practitioner. So we were okay. But as you know, social media stand up, that's a different world when it comes to income. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can I just add really quick to, to stick up for your wife in a sense where my good friend, one of my black belts, Maria Jose, is a nurse practitioner. Now, I have other people that I know are nurses, and a nurse practitioner is like above a nurse, mm -hmm. but it's a horrible name because it sounds like you're just practicing to be a nurse. So they get no respect. I mean, from if they if you tell somebody, oh, I'm a nurse practitioner, they'd be like, I mean, it's it's higher up than a nurse. It's a yes. my point is they should change that name. It's yeah. not respectful to because they have to earn that and study to be a, higher than a nurse. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're just trying to be a nurse. It sounds like almost an internship. I, I wouldn't have known that if you didn't just say it. I didn't know what that was. What is the difference between a nurse and a nurse practitioner? A nurse practitioner is basically a doctor. They are they are if you go to a doctor's office now, you will see more than likely you will see a nurse practitioner. Because nurse practitioners can write prescriptions. They do everything a doctor does. They just have to be under a doctor's license. And a doctor will review uh, some of the things they do. But they're, they're the main person. Um, so, you know, they go. Uh, my wife went three years extra to school after her four-year nursing degree. That's so they, doing. yes. So, so she is, she's the doctor on the scene. So when I'm you do, sure. a, oh sorry, Matt. When you do a respiratory uh, machine, do you do stuff like I know the anesthesiologist will put somebody out, but do you do you do breathing machines for people during surgery, or or what, what exactly would that be? If you are in a traumatic accident uh, and and we have to have surgery, you have to have surgery, or you are just in the intensive care unit and you cannot breathe on your own, the surgeon or the anesthesiologist will knock you out, and either I will stick the tube down your throat. They'll do it, and then I will put you on my machine, and I will control your volumes, your rates, and everything else according to your weight, your height, and all that stuff. There's all these equations and all that stuff you have to know to, to put somebody on and give them the right tidal volumes and all that scientific jargon. Well, what pressure? I mean, that always seems like such a, like if somebody's under getting like, you know, I, I had to go recently for a colonoscopy and it's like somebody has your life in their hands and you, 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 and you have to pay attention to what you're doing, right? You must be able to focus oh. pretty well because you can't fucking zone out while you're doing that. Oh no, no, you can't, you can't. <laughs> no, but, uh, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. It's anything like anything else. Like Matt does jujitsu and he's a, he's a perfectionist and as, as good as he is, he's a pro, but yet he continues to get better and get better. And you always have to keep your eyes open, man, because at any time, anything could happen. You know, you could have somebody going good and then they just crash and burn on you. Yeah. I heard that you've been, you, you tried jujitsu or trying jujitsu. Is that true? You're training? My, yes, sir. Uh, my son started and he's actually in wrestling too. And he's nine. And I was like, I cannot let this kid whoop my ass because he's <laughs> like, kid. and so I started with him and we, we thoroughly enjoy it. Where do you train? I mean, what do you train? Jiu-Jitsu? Yes, sir. Spartanburg Jiu-Jitsu. My coach's name is Brandon Perry. Uh, yeah, cool, really cool cat, soft-spoken, just like you. You know, very soft-spoken guy. But, man, he will roll you into a pretzel in a heartbeat, and he will hurt you. Beautiful. Yeah, you like it. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. I, I love the contact. You know, it's just, uh, it's just something about it. You know, it's just very just primal. 
Man, you get you, you get used to it. I didn't think I'd get used to the to the sweating of somebody on you or or, or somebody <laughs> else's fucking armpits, but you do get used to it pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. I went up against this three hundred pound Russian guy because you know when you're uh, when you're just rolling, you're just going against everybody. Yeah. So uh, you get this big old fella, this big bear on top of me, and it's like a bean bag laying on my face. And it's, it's wild how you learn how to control yourself because, you know, I, I was like, I'm suffocating, dude. I'm going to die right here. This is it. Yeah. You know, this is not the way I want to go out under a, a 300 pound Russians do a uh, Russian dude's belly. But you just, you learn to, to, you, I don't know how you do it, man. You just learn to control yourself. How's your cardio? For me, I get very tired. Very, like, I never knew what being tired was until I had somebody laying on top of me. And I literally <laughs> just wanted to go, I quit. I, I can't do this. This is really tiring. Well, I, I'm a strong guy. I've always lifted weights. And I learned very quick that I thought my strength could get me out of certain things at the beginning. And it could, but it takes a lot of energy to do that. So I finally learned to pace myself a lot more and a, and a lot better because man, that, that adrenaline dump, when you first start rolling, it was like after that first match, I was dead. But now I've, I've learned to really control myself a lot better. And I feel a lot better after rolling a couple of times, a few times. Let me ask you now, cause you know, you're, you're attacking the stand up comedy and things are going great with the social media, uh, helping that out. Um, do you ever think about like branching off into like acting and stuff like that? I do, but I don't know if y'all have noticed. YouTube guys, social media guys, you never see them in movies a lot. Um, you, you never see. Look at Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and, and all these big-time YouTubers and social media guys. I mean, I, I've got good numbers, but it's like you don't see a lot of guys like us in Hollywood. But now I do think that my stand-up, you do see stand-up comedians transitioning. So, And I am getting some roles here and there that are being sent to me. Um, and I would be fine with it. I want to try everything. I sing parodies. I do stand up. I do skits. So I, I like doing it all. I don't, I don't want to be a one trick pony. I guess you could say. Uh, well, the difference is too, with YouTube and influencers. And I, I know I hate that word too, but it's a newer phenomenon, uh, circumventing. It's, it's really great that all of these people are circumventing the business itself and getting successful. So the business doesn't have any say basically in what you do. The business doesn't have any say in Jake or Logan Paul. They, they'll go to them because they're so successful. So I think it's a newer phenomenon. I, I just think that the industry itself doesn't know how to fucking handle it. Like yeah. people just shooting past anything they could provide for you. I mean, what are they going to do that's going to get you 7.3 million no. followers or 6.6 or .6 on Facebook? Like, they're not going to offer you anything that you can't do for yourself or better. That's right. That's like America's got got talent. They've come at me a few times. I'm like, dude, what can y'all do for me? Like, yeah, I, that's, you know, y'all are going to what? You're going to get my fans. I'm going to have to be away from making all my content stand up just to do this show for y'all. And it ain't going to do nothing for me. True. So, right. Yeah. It's a different world now with the social media. It really is. It really takes the place of trying to get on the tonight show and some shit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which I've never been invited to anyway. So uh, it's nice to be able to have a platform where you can just do whatever you've built your own fan base. And, and uh, these people really, uh, especially my fans, man, these good old people. So uh, they're very supportive. And, and yeah. even though, even though Ginger, you were, you were making a great living doing what you were doing with your um, being a doctor, a respiratory uh, doctor, right? Respiratory, respiratory therapist. A therapist. I mean, there's something to be said about your day-to-day -day life and enjoying what you do day-to-day. -day. Is it not, is it just the money or is it just, I mean, is this, how much more do you prefer this life? You know, the money actually, I didn't get paid first two, three years doing this. And you realize that when it does become a thing where it is your income, it becomes more stressful. It's yeah. not as much fun anymore, man, because now this, if I don't put out a video that gets big views, I, I didn't make any money. So, oh. it, it, you know, so, and you know how it is. You go out in public, everybody knows who you are. I mean, you, dude, you're a freaking legend uh, from what yeah. you've done. So when you go out in public, you're constantly, you have to be, even if you feel like crap, you have to be a nice guy. Yeah. You have to go out and you have to, Hey, yeah, I'll take a picture, you know? And, and I, I love that because that means people are watching me and, and that means the world, but it's a different type of pressure. It's, it's, uh, this is how you make a living now. So it's, it's more stressful than it used to be when I was just doing it for fun.
So do you have one guy, because I saw, I was watching one of your tank video, which was really uh, very entertaining, and you have a guy filming you and editing, because you're, I see you're probably, if you're doing your own editing, you're probably working more hours now than you were as a respiratory uh, therapist. It's, it's a fucking nightmare to do all that stuff. Do you have one guy filming and one guy editing? How do you do it? I got one guy, and he is what I call my redneck engineer. He worked at a fab shop. So me and him, man, I get this idea in my head. I'm like, dude, I want to turn a car into a lawnmower. So we build it, me and him, and then he films it. And then I edit it. I don't, I'm too cheap to hire a team. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to pay nobody. <laughs> so, so yeah. I'll, I'll have him, me and him build it. He films it. I edit it. And, and that's how it's been for six years. I've never had anybody else. Are you good in those? I, I suck in those programs. It's like, I realize how bad uh how hard that stuff is are you really are you naturally i mean i guess you're very you're a bright guy obviously because your old job you probably learn things quickly yes sir well i i'm just i was the only child i grew up out in the middle of nowhere and on a farm so i had to have an imagination and i think that imagination has followed me into my adulthood and that is why i make these beautiful creations Yep, here's the truck. We're looking at the green truck with a uh, yellow bumper and it's got was that the lawnmower attached to it in the back that's called Deron Beer. Yeah, I couldn't call it. Of course, I couldn't call it John Deere for copyright purposes. So I called <laughs> yeah. it Deron Beer, and it cut like a dream, man. That's that the deck. So cool. Yeah, dude, front wheel drive. You got air conditioning, cup holders. You be cruising around, cutting the grass, and just chilling. That's fucking amazing. And it actually is. It works in a practical way. Like you could actually cut the grass with it. Oh man, you don't know how many people I've had want to pay me to make those. I That's mean, it is, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it cuts, man. This year we're going we're gonna to up the ante and we're going to make a limousine lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Were you tempted to make the, because I, I would have thought that the front wheels would have been the blade or would that not have worked? It's a front wheel drive car. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I, I couldn't take the front ones off. I wanted to keep the back wheels on, but it was just too low of a car, so I had to take them off. And we just put the little swivel wheels on there, man, and she turns and, and does everything you need her to. Yeah, and supports the weight of the truck. Yeah, but the truck ain't but like, I mean, it's a Ford Festiva, so it barely weighs as much as I do. <laughs> I mean, it's a very tiny car. Uh, well, Billy, too, I, I, we were talking before, because I know with the, the numbers and the amount of fans you have, if you wanted to do small theaters or big theaters, you could do them, but you're doing clubs. So are you, I'm, I'm imagining you're just getting in reps, like you want to get in four sets for a weekend. Um, are you shooting, getting ready to film something, or are you just enjoying, uh, uh, enjoying just doing stand-up for, for the fun of it? No, I filmed my. I actually filmed my special in Duluth, Georgia, a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So we got a. We're we're in the process. They're in the process of editing that, and then we hopefully it'll go to Netflix. I don't know. It would be nice, but uh, no, man. I just do theaters. I, I'm I do casinos. Like I got a casino yeah. coming up this week. This uh, twelve hundred capacity, and I sold it out twice, like back to back. So I had to do two shows. But the clubs, you know how it is. Clubs have low overhead. You go in. You do your thing, you leave. You don't have to worry about uh, paying theater. Like theaters charge you so much for bull crap. Yeah. And so, you know, they even want part of your merch, man. It's like, I bought these shirts. Why are yeah. you going to take 30%? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, they're disgusting. Uh, but especially, hey, look, if you just shot a special, I know you're going to be working on material. It's actually good to have a bunch of comedy club sets because uh, instead of just doing one or two sets, you could do four or six and just work on the material. But it looks like you're doing great, um, and your stuff is really funny. So congratulations on everything. Um, yeah. Look, I'm looking forward to that special, uh, whether it's on Netflix or, dude, if you put it on your YouTube, it, it, it'll it'll get millions of views. So whatever you do with it is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a bucket list thing, man. It's one of the things where Netflix to me is where it's at, and that's where I want it to be. But sure. hey, we'll see. we'll see, you know. And uh, let me tell people where they can follow you, Billy. Uh, uh, at the Ginger Billy on Facebook, Ginger Billy on uh, YouTube, comedian Ginger Billy on uh, Instagram, and Ginger Billy One on uh, TikTok. But if they just Google you, they can, I'm sure they can connect. Yeah, you probably have a LinkedIn thing that's got all your fucking. You Google Ginger Billy, it's coming up. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, it's good talking to you, man. And uh, we'd definitely love to have you back if you want. And good luck with the special. I, I hope it winds up Netflix. And, and I think that's really great. Oh, no, I appreciate it. I, I truly appreciate it. Hey, Matt, I just want to say, big fan, man. You're Thank a legend. You. And maybe one day, wherever you're from, uh, maybe I can come in and train jujitsu. You know, Any take a class if I'm doing a show somewhere down there. If you're anywhere near Long Island, New York, you're welcome. You'd be my guest anytime. Let me know for sure. 
you thank know? you, man. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Man. Take care, Billy. Nice talking to you. Y'all take care, man. All right, buddy. You too. Yeah, I have an open invitation for guys like that. It's nice. Yeah, be a nice guy. I'm always there, you know. Uh, Jimmy, why don't we just do a couple of picks? Why don't we pick the Kobe? Yeah, let's do that. Hold on one second. Give me a second here to get my... Give me a reason to... Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Shamil. Shamil. Yeah. I'm not going to say it. You don't like to play. Huh? Shamil. Kazeev. All right. Um, Undefeated. Right. I'm looking at how he's... uh, uh, we know what Rosen Strike is a primarily a striker. Um, how has he won most of his? Uh, okay, TKO, choke, punch, punch. Decision. Yeah, but he had, wow, he had, he's had everything. He's very, very well rounded. Yeah, yeah, he is. But you know, uh, Rosen Strike will strike hard. Okay. Yep. And uh, I'm going with Rosen Strike. I'm going with th- uh, se- second round knockout. Okay, and I love Rose's strike, but I, I don't want to pick the same guy as you. It's not fun. So I will. Uh, I'm going to take uh, the number three heavyweight. I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Kaziev. I say he uh, finds a way to sub him in Shamil. the third. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We're both taking the third. I'm saying stoppage by. Uh, I, I said second or third. You said second. I don't think the second. Then come on, Rosie Strike. Let's fucking go. Now a light oh. heavyweight fight is the co-main, and I really like uh, Tyson Pedro very much. He's fighting. He had an undefeated guy, uh, Vita Petrino. I'm just looking at some of the uh, the wins, knockout, sub, decision, knockout, knockout. Yeah, much more of a. I'm taking uh, I'm taking Vitor by first round knockout. Okay, I am taking Tyson Pedro. Uh, I think he hands him his first L, and I think he does it in the second round. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, again, Petrino has fought some good fighters, but if you look at Tyson Pedro. Um, I just think he has fought a, a little bit of a higher uh, level of fighter. So, um, yeah. I'll take Tyson Pedro. Jimmy, I took my shirt off. I know, I was hoping. That you know why? Because Ginger Billy, I thought was going to take his shirt off, and he didn't do it. So I took mine off. Now, by the way, Matt, you have two more fights than I do because... I was not here one show. Yeah. So what should I do? How should we get me back those two fights? Should I pick a, an extra fight? Or like, what do you think we should do? Let's ask our ginger producer. Yeah. What do you think, Jake? Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. What are you, nude? Yeah. All right, Jake. Good talk. This is what we're going to do. Oh, He's like, I don't know if Matt is going to miss a show. Oh, oh yeah, maybe show. Matt will miss his show. Okay. All right, we'll play it by you that way then. I'll just continue to kick your ass. Yo. Yeah, but if he and doesn't, like, I have to get those two fights back. You know, if I was a rapper, I'd be like, yo, just like Umar, anyone could get it. You understand? Yeah. That's what he's saying, basically, is anyone can get it. He is kind of saying that, yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Push-ups and jiu-jitsu. Oh, you didn't ask how I got this. What? All right, Jimmy, listen, it's been a great... I got to work on my head and arm choke. What are we training? Uh, well, tomorrow I'm not doing anything because I have to tape something. I'm busy tomorrow. And I'm back on... Oh, when are we training? Yes. Uh, whatever you want. Let's do... I uh... see the upcoming weeks. Hey, hey, I, hey. I actually, actually, next week, the family's going out of town. I'm going to get a day to come in this. Don't say you. I leave town next Wednesday. Next, the next couple weeks are bad because I go away next Wednesday. And then I'm in um, Austin, Oklahoma, hey, uh, back to back. But for the next two or three weeks, I can't. But after that, I can. Get I almost off it. No, but I would love to. 
Let's plug All the right. fights. Jimmy, man, let's plug the fights, please. Okay, tonight, 7 p.m., Fat Black Pussycat. And there's a new podcast. My wife and I, we have the very funny Karen Feehan is our guest. Our second attempt at a podcast is on Nikki and Jim NYC is our YouTube. Rosenstrike versus Gazeev. Um, that is March the 2nd, and that is this Saturday. Prelims at 1.30 p.m., 4 o'clock is the main card. Uh, really, really great main event. Uh, Umar Nurmagomedov, I'm very, very excited about that fight with Almakan, and uh, let's see how in, it goes. If you're in and about Atlantic City this weekend, Friday night is the Ring of Combat. Lou Negley is Ring of Combat at the Tropicana. I'll be there with the Serras. Awesome. Right? And young Marcus will win his pro debut. Hey, man, yeah, Jimmy, thanks, luck. bro. I'll talk to you within a few days. Yes, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Take one more look at this. I can't. Bye. Bye, Jimmy. Screensaver.